Hey YouTube, it's Joelle here and today we're going to be making a Venus flytrap terrarium. So here is my Venus flytrap and you might be wondering why I decided to make a terrarium for it because Oftentimes, Venus flytraps aren't the best suited for these types of environments. But so the reason is because I had it on my windowsill and my cat likes to go in there. And as you can see, I'm not sure if one of my cats is, did this, but it's like one of its leaves are ripped and that could be pretty dangerous and stress out the plant. So I really want to minimize uh, the chances of my cat getting to them because I don't know if she might tip it over or chew on any of the leaves and i feel like having a terrarium would make it more enclosed and keep it safe so yeah let's get started i first started off by rinsing off the terrarium and removing any of the dust and of course drying it next i began making the false bottom i used regular white gravel for the drainage layer I tried making the drainage layer very thin so that I have enough room to add the soil. Next, I added a piece of mesh above the gravel. This is to prevent any soil from entering the drainage layer. For the soil, I mixed a small amount of sphagnum moss with EcoEarth. EcoEarth has nutrients in it, so it would be best to rinse it off with distilled water. This is because Venus flytraps cannot tolerate high nutrients in the soil. Using a spoon, I spread out the soil across the mesh. I tried to make a very thin layer because I'm still going to be using the remaining soil from the pot. When it came to removing the Venus flytrap, I tried doing it in the least stressful way for the plant. I first started off by squeezing the pot. This was to break up the soil. Then using a spoon, I tried separating the soil from the edges of the pot. Lastly, I turned the pot over. I tried my best not to touch any of the mouths of the traps, however, this was a very tedious procedure. Finally, I add the Venus flytrap into the terrarium with the original soil intact. Then, I used tweezers to put the Venus flytrap into a position where it looks the best and would most likely survive the best. I also used the tweezers to fix up the soil a bit. The reason I decided to keep some of the original soil was because I don't have much of any type of soil that has very low nutrients besides the original so I thought it would be best if I just kept it. Next, I added some decorations. This is just some red lava rock. I thought it looked well because it matched the mouths of the Venus flytraps. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I added some live moss. The only problem with moss is that it may raise the nutrient level of the soil. However, it looks very pleasing. I tried placing moss in all the areas where soil was exposed. This is to prevent it from looking too plain. I also noticed that I had a baby Venus flytrap, so I tried placing that in another area of the terrarium. I tried compressing the moss into the soil with my fingers so that I can make sure that the Venus flytrap gets the maximum light. So this is much of the final piece. I'm hoping that once the Venus flytraps open up, it looks a lot better. I'm also hoping that the new sprouts will start to grow upwards instead of drooping down because I believe it will look a lot better in this terrarium. And lastly, I add distilled water. This will remain in the false bottom and act as a water table. It will keep the soil damp and allow the plant to uptake it. This is similar to how the Venus flytrap will uptake water if it was in a pot and had a tray. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it. These are my two terrariums so far. If you liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.